Good afternoon and welcome to Tynecastle Park for today's game between Harm and Lothian and Wraith Rovers, which we'll be bringing you live on Hearts TV in about half an hour or so. But before then, we have a special show in store for you this afternoon as we welcome on a couple of guests representing the Hearts ladies team. First of all, delighted to be joined by new Hearts ladies manager, Grant Scott. How are you doing, Grant? Not so bad, Laurie. Thanks. Uh, nice to have you on the show. Uh, now, you just replaced Kevin Milne just this week. So uh, Just this week, yes. Um, unfortunately, Kevin's had to uh, resign from post. Um, he's taken up a, a development role um, with the SFA, I believe, um, and time restrictions really just meant that uh, he couldn't commit. So I've been working with Kevin for the last year at the first team squad. Um, so I know, the, I know the group, know what we're all about. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. And part of that squad you'll be working with is Samantha Cunningham. I'm delighted to also be joined by her as well today. How are you doing, Sam? Not bad, thanks. And I uh, understand it's been a busy weekend for you this week, is it? Uh, out yeah. last night for a certain birthday, was it? Yeah, 21st birthday last night. So uh, <laughs> n luckily no game today? No. I don't think Grant would have been having any of that. No, definitely not. <laughs> so first of all, a lot of listeners uh, won't have a much idea about the Hearts ladies side. Uh, Grant, so you give us a, a little idea of them. I know they've been doing very well recently, so you can tell us through the achievements of certainly last season and looking ahead for the team. Yeah, um, probably the last four years has been the most notable where we've, we've come through from the second division, um, spent uh, uh, two years in the first uh, before getting promoted at the end of last season. Um, last season we won our League Cup also. Um, so. Around about five years ago, there was a plan in place to, to really get us um, into that Premier Division, and thankfully we've managed it. Um, the challenge now is just maintaining the status and, and being in that league and competing. Um, so that, that's, that's the most recent history. Yep, the Scottish Women's Premier League, which was founded back in 2002, the highest level of women's football in Scotland. Uh, the team that finished off that actually qualified for the UEFA Champions League, the women's one that would be. Um, it was only 2009, I understand, that uh, the Hearts team became the Hearts ladies, formerly of, uh, of Musselburgh. Uh, uh, there have been a, f a few other teams that maybe a bit longer. You, I know you were involved previously, I get a few boos around this part, I suppose. You are previously involved with Hibs ladies, who've got three <laughs> titles to their name. Um, and you've got Glasgow City with nine. Uh, is that the sort of um, where you're looking to aim? This is obviously a, a, prog a, a progress you're looking in, a work in progress as such, Grant, that you've yeah, got to say? Yeah, that's really it. Um, I mean, obviously... Yeah. The, the um, keep going. The uh, process to get us into the Premier Division was one thing. Um, staying there obviously is critical this year, but um, realistically, the the ambition will be to stay in the division, consolidate Stop. a position. Stop. For All right. That. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so sorry, you were saying, Grant. Obviously, the work in progress <coughs> at the moment. The Hearts ladies team, obviously, a little bit behind some of the teams who have been around a bit longer. Yeah, that's correct, and and that's just really um, the, the the infrastructure that we had at the start, and and playing catch up a little bit with the established teams that you've mentioned, City and Hibs and people like that. Um, you know, they're they're the, at the top end for good reason. They've got the best players, um, internationalists and stuff. Um, so we really need to uh, to be at, to be in the Premier League's one thing, and we need to really try and compete at that level, um, and and maintain our state as a Premier League club. And uh, Sam, I've, I've got to throw something else. Sam, who's in her Hearts uh, Ladies uh, tracksuit today, which has the 1874 Fighting Fund on the front. There, a certain Jimmy Sanderson uh, made me say that out loud, but <laughs> 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 certainly has. I think they've been a big help, haven't they? The 1874 Fighting Fund. They've, uh, obviously they've assisted with the actual the senior side a lot as well around Tynecastle but also with you guys as well now yeah it's uh, also self funded so it's good to get get them involved and, and get some money on board so we can buy it like this buy our kit and, and uh, for travelling and stuff I know you're a Hearts fan as well I believe yes so yes, so older as well what's it, what's it like <laughs> to, to, to wear the, the moon of hearts you've got the obviously the official badge on there you know you know Anne Budge has said she wants to be part of of Heart and Lothian as an overall club more involved I mean it must be it make you very proud to wear that on a, well, on a weekly basis when you are playing yeah it does it's great to pull on the jersey and it's just really good that we're starting to get more recognised now especially when Budge come in and she's getting involved as well so yeah it's good 
and uh, as a, a, a women's footballer, I mean, is, what's the sort of aspirations? Where can you go with that? I mean, there's obviously not as much coverage of the game, certainly in this country, but is that something you think can change going forward with a bit more exposure for the women's game? Yeah, I'd hope so. If just try and get, like say, Glasgow City are doing well in their recent Champions League games are on the telly and stuff, so so that's good. And um, hopefully just get more money into the game, I think. And and More I think exposure that, as well. And that's a big, big thing, Grant. Is it the, the money into the game? Um, I, I know that the Hearts ladies are talking about sponsorship, and that's something that you know you'd, you'd be looking at trying to get people interested and people on board as well, just to help the team. Yeah, and the funding side of things. Absolutely. I, I mean, as Sam touched on there. It's, it's basically at the minute all self-funding. So anything we do, anything we we need, equipment, um, kit, you name it. Um, we have to fund. We have to fundraise ourselves. So players are asked to do some some fundraising via um, individual sponsorships. So employers or supporters or um, wherever they can get that from. Um, so various things like that help um, in the exposure because it's not as heavily supported um, as obviously the men's game. It's just not the size and scale of it. But um, ultimately, there's there's people doing things like that at the SFA trying to increase the, the profile. Um, and, and ultimately, I think we're gearing towards semi or, or professional type leagues, similar to other countries. But um, yeah, at this stage, most clubs are probably fighting to raise raise funds to be, enable things to improve. So, so tell us about the. I mean, I know there are sponsorship packages available. Uh, can people get more information? Any more information you can give? Just if anyone is listening in that might be interested in looking into that. Yeah, further. there are some details, and I think um, application type forms on the Hearts Ladies website. Um, Heartsladiesfc.co.uk, so I believe. Yep. Um, so there's individual player sponsorship for the season. There's match match um, sponsors, program sponsorship, varying levels of, of uh, value for those that could uh, could do anything like that. And then looking at games coming up, Sam, there's I understand a big one coming up very soon later on this <laughs> month. Uh, yeah, Edinburgh Derby next week, I think it is. Yep, Sunday the 26th of April. Yep. Um, and how often do they come about? Because I know Hibs have been a top flight one, so I can't imagine they've been very often for you. No, well, um, we had the point against the development, uh, Hibs development team, and they've been in the same division a couple, for a couple of years. Um, but it'll be good to get, get in the big league and play the big team there, so... And uh, I, I mean, I'm looking at the, the table, it's, it's not something you see very often. Hibs are top of the, the women's table, but I suppose... <laughs> I didn't know that one. <laughs> I, I suppose going forward, um, I, I know they are obviously a few years ahead in terms of development. That might be something you want to change. Uh, well, both of you, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, Hibs are there for good reason. They're, they're a long-established club, um, fantastic coach, um, who I know. Um, and, and again, the quality of player, they've got several international players um, and, a, and a new team this season, really, almost. A um, lot of signings in the close season. Um, but, you know, they're there on merit and, and they're just a bit ahead of us at the minute. But, you know, we'll, we'll look to, to capitalise on anything they do next week for sure. Um, and, but we'll be ready. We'll, we're looking forward to it. And so the home games are generally at Pepper Mill every time around, is it? So if anyone does want to come along and watch, because I know you're, you're playing in the summer, so if anyone's uh, yeah. at a loose end after the, the senior team, the senior men's team's uh, on holiday. Yeah, sure. The, the supports obviously would be welcome. We've, we've, we've just actually done a, a um, tie-in with Dalky Thistle, the junior team at the moment. Um, so going forward from now, and that includes next week's game, that will be at Kings Park and Dalkeith, the, the junior's pitch. Um, so back on a grass surface and it's a slightly different game on the, the Astro Turf at Peffer Mill but um, yeah so that's the new arrangements Dalkeith, Kings Park and Dalkeith OK a couple of uh, comments on kickback there, Jambo Ali just saying looking forward to watching them again over the summer so that's one Jambo who obviously finding his maroon fix <laughs> by going to watch the ladies in the summer uh, Voice of Reason, a couple of quick questions, he was interested in what kind of support the women's team gets from the club and is that something that has started to increase since Anne's taken over, I mean I don't know if Grant will be aware of that just now or maybe Sam because she's been a, around a bit longer recently um, I think just with the kit and stuff, I think when we first started we got strips and stuff Back in, um, yeah, back in 09, wasn't yeah, it? There yeah, was a yeah, bit of a yeah. press release about yeah, that. Yeah, uh-huh. And um, I think they've done some photo shoots at Tynecastle just to get some exposure exposure about the club, but um, I'm not really sure about it now. Hopefully going forward, yeah, Anne will be getting <laughs> quite involved. I mean, he did also ask as well um, about why don't they train in the west of Edinburgh? There's a question for you to try and get more uh, hearts-minded, talented female players like Sam over than uh, the um, current training spot. I don't know, is it just what's available really, Grant? Yeah, there's a, a bit of both. A bit of the uh, history of the club obviously started over um, when we moved from Musselburgh. It was east side of town. 
Um, and there, are, you know, a lot of the, the players at that particular time came from that area. Um, but, you know, we have um, got players coming through from, from West Lothian. We have some coming up from the border. So, we're, you know, our net and our name spreads pretty far and wide and we do OK. Um, yeah, ideally, probably more more central to the town or west side, um, to, just to capture a bit more. Um, but those types of things are things that are quite difficult to do. You know, the, the committee and the infrastructure at the clubs and the ladies' section are working um, closer, more closely now probably than ever with Hearts. Um, and Anne Budge certainly has been a great, a great supporter of us since she came here. So, yeah, we, we, we are looking at things like that just to give us more opportunities in, in the right area of town. And Sam, uh, uh, Voice of Reason, also says for the future of growth in women's football, should every top flight team be strongly encouraged, if not forced by the S SFA to field a ladies team? Do you think that might be something that would benefit going forward? Do you think there's a lot of other girls like yourself who might be out there that just don't have maybe a team, a big enough team to look at? Yeah, I would say so. I'd probably. Um, I think if there's more clubs, like obviously people that are coming all the way from Hoy can up the borders and stuff and in the town so if every league in Scotland had one every team sorry in Scotland had one be a wider range um, and another one here I suppose is a for his daughter actually is a living and loves playing football and he asked do you, do you think there'll be enough money in the women's game in 10 years time for girls like her to earn a decent full-time wage either of you on that one I don't yeah, know, do you I mean think that, it would develop that far that that's almost definite um, that you know there's the, the big league, leagues across Europe um, and, and even in England, um, have full-time professional athletes um, who, that, you know, that's their that's their day job. Um, so they're earning money, earning a living. Um, and to be honest, I don't think Scotland's that far behind. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Ten years' time, masses, masses of time, and the game will still grow. It's what's still one of the fastest-growing sports around. Um, so I have no doubt about that whatsoever. Uh, playing style is another thing that uh, Voice of Reason mentions as well. He says that Robbie, obviously, at the men's side, has a certain style of play encourages. Um, and Graham, what sort of, uh, what's your style of play? I suppose you're new to the job now, but what, <laughs> what style of play would you look into implement? And is that something that, similar to the men's game, would be filtered down? Because I know there's younger age groups as well that Hearts ladies have. Yeah, I mean, obviously, in post for a week, it's difficult to, to get all your ideas over in, in, in a week before our next game. But certainly, um, working with Kevin, uh, previously who's done a great job at Hearts um, you know we, we try and do it the right way good habits we try and play at a high tempo um, move the ball properly move it quickly um, and okay in a, in a tough division this season it's not going to come off every week but you know we won't sacrifice the way we want to play um, just because it's tough you know we, we have to do things the right way um, and then that will filter down to you know all the age groups from, from under nines right through to development and Sam, yourself, so what position do you play in? Currently at centre back. Currently, so is that. Currently. Currently, is that, is that not where you your natural position in? Are you covering, are you? Uh, no, I've been playing there for the past couple of seasons, but um, I like to play in centre mid as well, and I've also had my first year at right back as well. So. Very versatile, okay. <laughs> and um, looking forward, so in terms of your career in the game, we're talking about, you know, Grant's quite positive, positive about where the women's game could go. Is that something that you could envisage as a, a career down the line, or you think you might just miss the boat a bit? It might come around uh, a bit too late for you. Probably, I think so. 21 now, the other day, like I said, getting on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so how long is that? How long is a, a, a woman's uh, career in the game? Is it similar to the men? Do they play on till their till the mid thirties as well, or is it? I hope so. <laughs> You'd hope so. Okay. They certainly do. I mean, there's different things with, with women's careers that do happen. You know, they, they start families and stuff. That doesn't affect a guy's career too often. You know, that's not sexist at all. It's just a fact. But um, yeah, we, we've got lots of evidence. Uh, a, a, a ladies playing international football and top level football um, right into their late 30s no problem at all oh, well I did mention to you guys off here beforehand uh, Suzanne Grant formerly of Celtic who trained uh, when seven months pregnant yeah. and then got back to playing five weeks after giving birth uh, you think you'd, you'd fancy doing that one Sam then if it ever comes about the scenario ever comes yeah. around I don't know. See what happens, I guess. Uh, it's, uh, that's commitment. I mean, I'd like to see a lot of uh, I'd like to see a lot of men's footballers manage to cope with, with, with those kind of strains. So looking ahead next week, Sam, what, what do you reckon your chances are going to be like in the big Edinburgh derby against Hibs? I don't. You always have to go into the game thinking you're going to get something. Or, so um, hopefully, hopefully, you can pick up a point or something. You never know. But um, it'll be a it'll be a hard task put it that way. 
um, but I'll train hard this week and then see what happens. And aims for this season, is it a case of just trying to establish yourself in that top flight, trying to remain in there and then gradually build from there? Yeah, I think so. Um, just try and stay in the league this year and then just keep building, like you said. Well, let's hopefully I hope it does go well for you guys. Good luck uh, next week uh, against Hibs in the Big End with Darby. Good luck for the season. Thanks so much for coming on this afternoon. Thank you. Um, if you want to find out more about the Hearts Ladies team, you can visit the website heartsladiesfc.co.uk. You can also follow them on Twitter at heartsladiesfc. Um, I can give your Twitter handles out. Are you put okay with that? Yeah, yeah don't want to publicly yeah. no, put no. them out there. You, you get <laughs> any abuse. It should only be Hearts fans listening, so you should be all right. <laughs> you can get Grant on Twitter. He's at Grant A. Scott. And you also get Sam. She's at underscore Sam Cunningham. All one word. So uh, happy belated birthday, Sam. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> congratulations on the job, Grant. Yes, and thank uh, you. as we mentioned, good luck next week. And if anyone wants to attend, as I said, it's Sunday, the 26th of April, 3 o'clock at Peffermill Plainfields if you want to go and support and cheer on the Heart and Golden ladies team.